Hey guys, my name's Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. In today's video, I'm going to show you a script I've made here that unlicenses shared mailboxes across all of your customer tenants. I will be showing you here how to run it within Azure Functions so that you can run it as a scheduled task periodically, maybe once a day, once a week, once a month, something like that. But also, I'm just going to give you the link here, which you can use to run this locally as well, which just loops through all of your customers, sees who's a shared mailbox, sees if there's a license, and then strips away all the licenses they may have as well as part of its output. So within here, I would just preface this by saying I made a whole video about Azure Functions previously to this one. If you haven't checked that one out, I'd highly recommend it just so you have a better understanding of why I think Azure Functions are the future of scheduled tasks and how easy they are to use in the sense of being able to run scripts against your own customer tenants. This is just a sub or byproduct of that that I'm going to be showing you here today. The prerequisites are still the same as from that video, so you do need an Azure subscription to run this from within Azure Functions. And even if you are running this locally, you will need to derive the secrets from the secure application model and that's been outlined greatly here within this article from Kelvin over at CyberDrain, where he's written a script here that populates an app within your Azure Active Directory and creates these secret tokens here that you'll need for authentication in a secure fashion across all of your customer tenants. So regardless if you're doing this from Azure Functions again or if you're doing this locally, this is a basic prerequisite that you'll have to have in place so that you have the necessary authentication to tap into your customer environments. Before I get into actual creation of the function app, if you guys just want to run this locally, I wouldn't want to waste your time with the video walking through how to create the function app itself. So you can pop over into my GitHub page and I'll just link this below so you can do that. Go under the multi-tenant repository here and you'll see the unlicensed shared mailbox. And this is a script that you can just run locally, it uses MS online commandlets there to tap into your customer environments, look for those shared mailboxes and de-license them. So this is something that you could just run locally as well if you just wanted to do that instead of going through and, and running this. Again, the benefit of using it in Azure Function Land here is that you can schedule it as a task that, that is headless in the sense that you don't need somebody to log in every time and you can just run it on a schedule. So within here, uh, you can go ahead and search for function or if you've made function apps before, you'll find them here. You can just click on them and you can click on create. And within here, what you'll wanna do is obviously just associate the subscription you have within your tenant. You wanna associate it to a resource group or create a new resource group if you have one already. You can name this whatever you like. So if you're just doing this as a POC, maybe you just call it test something and it'll validate against that to make sure it's available. And you'll basically want to put in here PowerShell core, which is 7.0. You can't change that piece, but you can change the region here. If you put it in a resource group, I'd recommend putting it in the same region. Otherwise, the region that's closest to you here. As far as the hosting, you can create a new storage account that's associated with this or link to an existing if you've selected a predefined resource group that has one. Again, if you're just doing this for testing, I recommend just doing new. And for the plan type, you're going to choose the consumption serverless plan. I went through this in my last video, but they do give you the 1 million free executions per month. And that's like saying, hey, I just ran this script once. So depending on your frequency and all that, obviously you're not going to probably get close to a million. And uh, that means that your cost will be next to nothing. Maybe a few cents is what all I've done. And I've done a ton of testing with this in my account. For monitoring, I, I typically like to just leave application insights off. I'm not going to worry about tags. So this is the summary of the app that you're creating here. You'll just want to make sure like the highest priority things is that you have PowerShell core created here. 7.0 and then when you're ready click on create so i'm going to go ahead and do that but i'm actually going to pop into a function app that i had previously created just to give you the best experience from a demo standpoint but you're going to follow along with the one you're creating here so i'll be right back okay so i'm back here and there's a couple of prerequisites that we need to do after we've created our app here which is going under the configuration section in the application settings section here you're going to go ahead and add your secrets 
from Kelvin's script there over at CyberDrain with the secure application model so that you can perform this headless authentication. And this is what allows us to run this as a scheduled job in the cloud environment here in a secure fashion. And I've went ahead and put all these in. So application ID, application secret, exchange refresh token, refresh token, tenant ID, and UPN. Those are all ones that you would get from his output of the script there. And you'll just want to make sure you click on save when you're done for that. You'll see when we get to the scripting section of this tutorial that I call these as environment variables within the actual script itself so that I don't actually have to put in the secret that's plain text within my script. And I can provide this to you within GitHub as well. Under the general settings, you want to make sure the platform is set to 64-bit here as well. And make sure you click on save at the top of the page. The next thing we're going to do is go under the app files section. The app files, better known as dependencies, when you think about the requirements, PSD1 file here is something that you define the modules you're going to use and keep up to date within this particular function. So they're common ones you're familiar with, like Azure AD, Pardon Center, MS Online, things like that, that we typically call for commandlets across our customer environments or just one customer environment at a time. In this section here, you're going to add Azure AD Preview, and that is going to be equal to version 2 dot asterisk, which says, hey, I want two, version 2 and greater, basically. Keep me up to date if there's new uh, versions that are coming out and partner center three dot asterisk as well. So just keep the syntax, you're gonna want that within here when you do this and then click on save when you're done. When you go into the function here, you're gonna do a couple of things. You're gonna go ahead and create a new function and you're going to say it's a timer trigger. I'm not gonna be covering any other type today. For the schedule, this is a cron expression here, and it's simply saying that this is the frequency of which this is going to actually kick off and run this script. So just like a scheduled task in that sense, but if you're not familiar with cron expressions, I'll link this below, which allows you to populate this with whatever you'd like here as far as when it's triggered for the schedule, and it gives you clear examples so you can time this when you like. You may just want to do it every day again or every three days or something like that. And when you click on add here, it'll add this function. Again, for the purposes of giving you the best demo, I've already created one here, so I'm not going to do that. If you're following along, go ahead and click on add. So when you've added the function here, you're going to see that you can go into the code test section. And when you pull this up, it's just going to basically have some boilerplate code here that you know allows you to test and see the basic functionality of what this is doing. We're actually going to erase that and keep the, the param the timer in there because we're going to need that no matter what. And then we're going to paste in these values and you can actually get these values from the script I'll link below, which is the entire script that we're going to be using with inside the Azure function itself. But the first things that I like to do is import my modules so it can load them as dependencies into the directory within this Azure environment. And I do this because I found in the past that if I try to run this entire script out of the gate, it sometimes will time out or fail because it hasn't loaded these pieces in yet and it can't take doing the whole thing at once. Something that's like a little buggy with Azure Functions. So what I like to do, is just go ahead and load these in. And once I've done, I can click on save and you can go ahead and go to test run and actually run this so that it loads in these modules as part of your dependencies and it loads the actual package file into your directory and pulls it up here so you can actually run the commandlets associated with this. So in here you see that it loaded it for me for Azure AD Preview and for Partner Center. So those are the things that I would recommend that you do first. From here, what we're going to want to do is actually modify our script a little bit further here since we now have these modules loaded into our directory. One quirky thing that I found through testing is that this on line 48 and 49 here references a package file that has a specific number unique to your environment here for this .r input that you see here for the file path. And if you do not update this with yours, you'll get some errors that'll say can't find that path. So what we're gonna do here is go back into the code. We're gonna click back onto our function app, we'll click okay there. 
You just scroll down into the advanced tools section and click on go, which will open up a new window. You'll click on the debug console and click on PowerShell. And here we're just going to traverse our site. You'll go into data, manage dependencies, and then you'll see your file path here that you're going to need. And you see that these are the modules that we just loaded into the directory here. So it can't actually reference these and we can't do that until we actually import them. So we're going to want to grab that here. And then this is what you're going to paste into the script for this piece in this section. So just make sure you cover that. Otherwise, now that we have that, we're good to go in the sense of actually pasting the script in and actually seeing it run. So again, what it's doing here is it's connecting to our customer environments. It's looping through our users to look for licensed shared mailboxes, and then it is removing those licenses. So it's telling you which users are licensed within the actual uh, environment itself and then actually going through and removing either a single license or an array of licenses there. So we can go back into the function section here and you can actually just paste in that particular script. I've already got to have it listed in there but you can go back into the code that you have listed here in the sense of just those small pieces and paste the rest of it in here as well. As I've got a couple of customers here within my partner center as test cases where Deborah here is a shared mailbox. And if I go under active users and I go back to Deborah, she has the Microsoft 365 business premium assigned to her here. And in another test account, this is again a shared mailbox. And Bruce here has Azure DP1 and Microsoft 365. So I want to show you this as an example because the script does facilitate both a single license removal or an array of licenses uh, from the user. So I just wanted to showcase that first, but let me pause briefly and then I'll pop back into the Azure environment where we have this script already pre-populated. So I'm back here within the Azure environment and I've got this pulled up here. This is simply just me copying and pasting what I have here within my GitHub page. And this is something that you can do as well, just to paste this in here. You'll notice that it is taking in the environment variables that we put in for the authentication. So this is allowing us to connect to all of our customers here and actually run the script within this environment and also just let it run as a job in the future on a scheduled task. So we're ready here, we click on test run and we're gonna click on run. And this will actually start looping through all of our customers and producing that output. So I'll be back here in just a few minutes when that's done. So I'm back here and the script has run successfully. And I just wanted to show you some of the output here. Some of it's not going to make full sense to you, but at a fundamental level, you know, we're doing the right host of being able to output, hey, we're checking shared mailboxes for XYZ company name. And then it's going to read you some stuff that you probably won't understand or need to understand. And then it's going to output any shared mailboxes that it finds within the tenant. It'll reference those SKU IDs here as well too. And then it'll move on to the next customer within your environment. So I showed you those couple of examples earlier and I just wanted to go back to them here. So we see Debra and if I refresh my page here, we now see that she is unlicensed. And if I go over to Bruce Wayne here, refresh the page on North Coast. We also see that he is unlicensed now as well. So it's very effective in that case. As, as far as any error handling goes, you might see some errors about not being able to connect or not recognizing certain variables. And what I would do there is make sure within your syntax here that one, they're spelled out correctly, they're pasted in here, but also more than likely you need to go back into your app sec setting section and make sure that there's no trailing white space and you've named them as you see within this script here as well. So be aware of that. The only other pieces you might get some errors on is if a customer within your environment does not currently procure any licenses that allow them to have exchange. And in that case, you'll just get an error that says, hey, we can't connect to Outlook. And it'll be, it will be longer here in the log, but it is referencing in the first line specifically that you can't find or you can't connect to Outlook. So those are a couple of the common ones that I've seen through testing. 
But outside of that, you know, this is everything you would need to set up and then it just runs on a job. And the only thing that you would need to do is keep in mind that the refresh tokens expire every 90 days. So you just want to update within your app settings here, the particular tokens and everything like that. The GUID for the application ID, the secret if you set it to never expire is all gonna be okay. But this in this section here, you'll wanna update the refresh tokens for exchange and for what we're using in the sense of connecting to various aspects of the commandlets like Azure AD and MS Online and things like that. So that's everything I wanted to showcase for you guys in this. So I'll link everything below. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. But otherwise, please like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space.